This is how a stock mechanical keyboard sounds like. And this is how a custom keyboard sounds. So, what makes them better? By the end of this video, you will know what differentiates custom keyboards from pre-builds and I will give away this $800 limited edition custom keyboard. You want to watch this. There are 6 main parts that make up a mechanical keyboard. Each one of these will have an impact on how your keyboard sounds. Starting with the case is where everything will be mounted and it's the first thing to consider when building a keyboard, as it dictates the form factor and what else you will need to complete the build. Some of the most popular form factors include 60%, 65%, 75% and 10 keyless or 80%. Maybe you don't need a number pad, so you go with a 10 keyless or a 60% because you want to have more space for your mouse when gaming, it's up to you. Keyboard cases can be made out of different materials, the main ones being plastic, acrylic or polycarbonate for entry-level models while higher-end ones use aluminum and other metals such as brass or stainless steel. Metal cases aren't exactly cheap to machine and manufacture so that's why they are so expensive. Oh my god, this is so heavy! In addition, cases can be designed using different mounting styles and variations of each style, each one of them having their pros and cons which will affect how the keyboards will sound and feel. Most pre-builds are tray-mounted, this means that the keyboard is screwed into some standoffs in the case and is usually the cheapest and easiest to make, but the sound is often inconsistent and it won't offer the best typing experience. Other mounting styles such as gasket mount are used on many custom keyboards and have different characteristics that will improve the sound and feel of this, but it's more expensive. The $800 Mode 80 luxury custom keyboard I'm giving away features a gasket stack mount and has a sheet of problem between the PCB and plate that delivers a more muted sound. Dampening foam is often used on keyboards to reduce the hollow sounds coming from the keyboard case. Also, some keyboard cases will offer the option to add weights to make them heavier because it feels nicer. If you don't have the budget, there's absolutely no need to spend hundreds of dollars on a high-end case. You can modify a budget case and make it sound really good. But generally, a metal case will be better. Once you pick a case, you will need a PCB that matches your keyboard's form factor. PCBs act like the brain and nervous system of the keyboard, as it's where all the switches will be connected. The PCB won't affect the sound and feel of the keyboard, but different models will offer different features such as Bluetooth, RGB, solderable or hot swappable sockets to build without soldering, and specific layer options such as split spacebar or stepped caps lock. Most custom keyboard PCBs are QMK or BA compatible, which is a program that allows you to fully configure your keyboard and save the settings on the onboard memory. You will also need a plate, which is placed between the PCB and switches to hold the switches in place and is used to mount them in the case using one of the mounting styles previously mentioned. The material of the plate will affect the sound and feel of the keyboard. Three common plate materials are brass, which will generally feel stiffer and generate a higher pitch sound, polycarbonate, which will feel softer and have a lower pitch sound, and aluminum is somewhere in the middle. Stabilizers are used on the longer keys such as Enter, Spacebar, Shift and Backspace to avoid them from wobbling. There are two types of stabilizers, plate mounted and PCB mounted. Long story short, PCB mounted are generally better and more secure but some budget keyboards only support plate mounted stabs. You can check this by looking at the PCB to see if there are holes to mount them. They are one of the most important things to mount as most of the unwanted rattling noise comes from the stabilizer wire. The stabilizer housing and wire need to be looped to reduce friction and fill the empty space inside the stabilizer housing. Just enough to eliminate the rattling noises. If it's overlooked, the loop won't allow the wire to move freely and will feel slow. Previous keyboards often aren't loop or have very poor loop applications so they sound like this. Switches are the best known part of a keyboard, as most mainstream keyboards often advertise different switch options such as Cherry MX Blue, Brown or Red, each one of these corresponding to a type of switch. With linear switches you will feel a smooth top to bottom trouble. With tactile you will feel a tactile bump when pressing the switch that indicates that the key has been registered, and clicky ones have a tactile bump in addition to a loud audible click. But wait, there's more. Switches are offered in a variety of spring weight options. These are often listed as bottom out force and you can change the springs of your favorite switch to adjust the spring weight. The material used to manufacture each switch will also affect how it feels and sounds, but I'm not going to go too deep into this topic. These things might look like very small details, but these small details will add up and make a very significant difference. When buying switches, you will often see that they are listed as plate or PCB mounted switches. Plate mounted switches will have 3 pins while PCB mounted will have 5 pins. Some keyboards don't have 
half plates so you will need PCB mounted switches with 5 pins to make sure it's straight and properly secure on the PCB. And some PCBs will only be compatible with plate mounted switches as they don't have the two extra holes for PCB mounted switches. In this case you can buy plate mounted switches or manually cut the legs on a PCB mounted switch. Cherry switches are the most recognizable switches but there are plenty of much smoother and better sounding ones out there. Which switch is best is up to preference as everything else in this hobby. But these are some popular and good switches you can try. You can buy a switch tester to get a better idea of the differences. Just keep in mind that the same switch won't sound the same way in different keyboards. Just like stabilizers, switches are often lifted to make them feel smoother, sound better and remove unwanted pinging sounds. I made a video showing you how to upgrade your keyboard, including how to loop your stabilizers and switches, so feel free to check it out. And finally, the keycaps. Keycap sizes are measured in use, one U being the size of one standard keycap. For example, a typical spacebar is 6.25 U's. This is important to know because some layouts require different keycap sizes for the modifiers. They come in different profiles. Each profile is differently shaped and this will affect the typing experience and how it sounds. For example, taller keycaps like SA produce a lower pitch sound often referenced as thock, while the higher pitch sounds are called clack. OEM keycaps are what most pre-built keyboards use and you have probably seen GMK keycaps. Those are Cherry profile, which is similar to OEM but a bit shorter. OEM, Cherry and SA keycaps are sculpted, which means that they have different heights for each row of keys to make it more ergonomic to type on. Keep this in mind when choosing keycaps for something like a 65 or 75% keyboard, as they might have some keys that won't be on the same row as a standard full-size layout and you will need extra keycaps for those keys. Most enthusiast keysets like GMK or Infinity key offer additional kits to fit different layouts that require different modifier keycap sizes and offer extra keycaps for keys on different rows. But cheaper options might not, so keep this in mind. Keycaps are built using two main types of plastics, ABS and PVT. The material and thickness of the keycap will affect the sound even if it's the same keycap profile. Also, contrary to popular belief, PVT isn't better than ABS, each one has its own pros and cons. ABS plastics have a smoother texture, is easier to mold, offers richer and more saturated colors, but tend to shine faster than PVT. PVT plastics have a more textured feel slash surface than ABS, don't shine as fast as ABS but will eventually do, and is harder to mold, so it often suffers from warping and straightness issues during manufacturing. There are three main ways keycaps are made, laser etched, die sublimated and double shot. Laser etched is mostly used to add fonts to cheap keycaps as it simply prints the legends on the keycap which will eventually fade away with enough use. With die sublimation, dies are infused directly into the plastic which allows you to add colors and legends to a keycap making them very durable. But colorways are limited when using this process and that's why double shot exists. In this case, the keycap is made using two layers of differently colored plastic, one for the keycap and another for the legend making it the most durable of the the cleanest legends and allows for very rich colors such as those found on GMK keycaps. But double shot requires making molds for each key, making it more expensive to implement new fonts and designs. And with all that, you now know how the sound of a keyboard can be customized to go from sounding like this to this. Now, here's how you can win this beautiful custom build. Mode 80 first edition serial number 39 of 450. The giveaway will go live on our Instagram accounts at Daily Setup Tech and Mode Keyboards. All you need to do is subscribe to my channel and follow the rules on the post in the description.